Absolutely crazy week for SoFi. The stock is up almost 17% this week alone. And all of this comes mere days after we discovered that per the latest NASDAQ filing, the company was at record high levels of short interest. 142 million shares sold short. A lot of people betting against this company. And naturally that begs the question after this rally to ask, has the short squeeze started? Is it well underway? Or was this move the short squeeze that we saw? Is it over? We're going to be talking about that along with more SoFi news that we saw this week. Let's dive right into it. Okay, so let's start off this video with the price action as we always do. As of this recording, SoFi is up about 16%, 17% over the past five days. And with all of those gains being over the past two days since the FOMC meeting happened. I'm recording this intraday on Friday about 11 a.m. as we speak. So I'm not sure where the stock is going to close today, but it's still a terrific move for SoFi over the past five days to make it back into the $9 range. As always, if you're new to these videos or this channel, I gather all the major pieces of news that I've personally seen surrounding SoFi and cover it every Friday in a weekly recap. For more of these videos, subscribe to the channel. Now, let's start off with some of the lesser important news. On Wednesday, I posted around a new SoFi at Work partnership with Kim Lee Horn, who is offering qualifying employees to receive up to 8% of their salary plus bonus for outstanding student loans in partnership with SoFi at Work. Keep in mind that Kim Lee Horn employs nearly 8,000 employees around 125 offices across the US and is one of Fortune's 100 best companies to work for. With regards to SoFi at Work, the press release states that using SoFi at Work's innovative student loan verification service, Kim Lee Horn will help its workforce pay off student debt while also maximizing retirement savings. A provision in the Secure 2.0 Act allows companies to offer this 401k benefit starting in 2024. So this is going to be starting in the new year. And how it's going to work is once the company identifies eligible participants, the student loan verification service is going to simplify the entire process from plan design to data security and reporting. SoFi at Work verifies the student loan payments and its 401k partner T. Rowe Price to deliver contributions for retirement matching. Basically, how it would work is the employees would pay off their student loans themselves. And then that verification service would let the employer know, Kim Lee Horn in this case, that this employee has paid off a portion of their student loans and then the employer would put a matching amount in the 401k of that employee meaning that the employee can still receive a matching amount in their 401k while they're paying off their student loans so it's as if me saying instead of me putting in two thousand dollars into my stock account i'm putting two thousand dollars towards my student loan and my employer puts two thousand dollars on my behalf in my stock account meaning that employees can still receive their 401k match while paying off their student loans. Now, one of the interesting nuances of this press release is that SoFi is not only partnering with Kim Lee Horn, but also their 401k provider, T. Rowe Price, which could mean that many more companies could be signing on to SoFi for repayment matching because T. Rowe Price is a giant company out there, right? The PR features this quote from SoFi at Works VP saying, quote, we're proud to collaborate with industry leaders like Kim Lee Horn and T. Rowe Price and look forward to redefining the future of employee benefits through our partnership together. Now, there's also a page on T. Rowe Price's website that talks about their partnership with SoFi. So obviously very interesting news. And SoFi at Work is a part of SoFi's business that I feel doesn't get too much love. It's sort of shadowed by the larger parts of SoFi's business, the invest part, the lending part. And so I wanted to definitely start off this video with SoFi at Work specifically, because I think that this kind of partnership is innovative and is really interesting that a lot of bigger companies in the US can definitely take advantage of. Okay, moving on. I also posted on Wednesday around SoFi to be hosting Super Bowl 61 in 2027. Now we've talked about SoFi Stadium in the past and the big brand benefits that a venue of this nature offers and how that far exceeds the giant bet that SoFi as a company took in purchasing the naming rights. This is just another testament to that, right? CEO Anthony Nodal calls this the eighth wonder of the world and it's easily one of the most recognizable stadiums in the US. One that has hosted the likes of The Weeknd, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Ed Sheeran. I mean, these are just the ones this year. The Super Bowl back in 2022, WrestleMania this year, Copa America in 2024, Summer Olympics in 2028, FIFA World Cup in 2026, and now another Super Bowl in 2027, making it twice the host of the Super Bowl in five years, from 2022 to 2027. And all throughout these events, viewers will see SoFi branding everywhere, SoFi advertising everywhere, SoFi members will see exclusive benefits in the venue itself. And just as a reminder, the reason why all of this is important is SoFi's unaided brand awareness. Basically trying to quantify how recognizable SoFi's brand is. 
And the higher that brand awareness goes, the more the company will see member additions, but not only member additions, member additions with lower customer acquisition costs, lower sales and marketing spend attributable to those members, because these new members will have already been made aware of the SoFi brand and can onboard onto the ecosystem organically because they know that this is an option, they know the APYs, they know the benefits that it provides. And all of this comes from the reinforcement of that brand in SoFi Stadium hosting these large events. Obviously very good, but you know, similar to TGL, uh, we won't see the benefits of the Super Bowl until, I mean, in this case, 2027, but this is a consistent reminder all throughout, which is gonna contribute to the member additions, right? Anthony Noto has said that 2024, 2025, we wanna be at 800,000 to a million plus member additions per quarter, this is how they're going to get there through that unaided brand awareness. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move to a main piece of news. SoFi Short Interest broke records for their November 30th filing. This is really interesting. And the reason why is because I mentioned that this could happen uh, a couple weeks ago when we talked about the November 15th filing, which featured over 130 million shares sold short, to which I said that the last time this happened was in June, and it was preceded by a large run-up in July leading to the Q2 earnings at the end of July. Well, as of the latest filing, the short interest has officially broken to new heights at over 142 million shares sold short, around 15 or 16% short interest in the stock, which I mean, SoFi generally hovers between 11 and 13. So it's definitely higher than usual. Now, the interesting part is that this comes at a time when the company is expected to report profitability, meaning that many people are betting against the company ahead of a major catalyst. Now, I commented on a post from Chris Hager expressing some of my thoughts around this saying, quote, it's easy for shorts to justify their position given the stock price action in 2023. SoFi has traded between $6 and $8 to $12, or, you know, three to four times this year. If one only looked at the charts alone and saw it at $8, they could make a rational argument that it's going to go back down to six and they could keep trading it in this channel. The caveat to this, however, is the business fundamentals and the profitability, which will break that pattern and see SoFi forming higher and higher lows as the underlying business continues to execute. And what I mean by this is that the stock doesn't trade in a vacuum, right? If all we had were technical analysis and the stock did not represent an underlying business, it's totally understandable to see a pattern to say, okay, well, if the company goes between six and 12, if it goes up to let's say $8 or $9, I can make a reasonable logical conclusion that it's gonna fall back down to six. So I can sell it at nine, buy it back at six and profit the difference. However, stocks do represent underlying companies. And in the case of SoFi, that underlying company is executing consistently. And as a result of that, it is very dangerous to have such high levels of short interest going into big catalysts such as profitability, knowing where the business fundamentals are I, you know, I think that's a really risky game that shorts are playing. And interestingly enough, as that news came out a few days later, we had the last FOMC meeting of the year, which formed a macro catalyst for all stocks. At the beginning of the week, the November CPI numbers came in at 3.1% meeting expectations. Core CPI inflation was unchanged at 4% and in line with expectations of 4%. Now this fueled a lot of higher for longer narratives because this is the 32nd consecutive month that we've seen inflation above 3%. However, on Wednesday at 2 p.m., the rally got kicked off because the FOMC meeting was hosted and the Fed announced that they were keeping rates unchanged. Now, a lot of fear was around a last rate hike at the end of the year. Powell himself noted this. I mentioned in previous SoFi weeklies that I thought that, you know, this was not going to happen, that he was going to project more hawkish because he needs to project more hawkish. Otherwise, the market would run. And now that they kept rates unchanged, the market, of course, did run. The Fed chair, Jerome Powell, said we're pleased with the progress on inflation. However, the more bullish point to me and I think for the market, which is you know a forward looking device, was less attributable to the fact that we didn't get a rate hike in December, although that is bullish in itself, and more attributable to the forecast in 2024. Looking at the dot plot here, of all the FOMC members, we can see that for 2023, every member is agreed on rates staying where they are. And over the next three years, generally we'll see rates falling to the 3% or less range. However, for 2024 specifically, one FOMC member saw six rate cuts, four members saw four rate cuts. However, the majority of members, six people saw three rate cuts, five members saw two rate cuts, and one member thinks we're gonna get a single rate cut, and two members didn't see any rate cuts at all. 
meaning that while the majority of members are clumped towards you know between three and four rate cuts in the new year there's still a lot of confusion and disagreement around the fomc members so of course the market is going to rally because the majority of fomc members see at least one rate cut which is likely going to end up being around three rate cuts let's be real which is going to start around q1 meaning that we could see rates being cut as early as three or four fed meetings from now and really lasting throughout the year because keep in mind that 2024 is an election year and the health of the economy inclusive of people's buying power inclusive of people's ability to save and yes you know even their retirements and pensions in the stock market all play a role in the election campaigns come winter 2024. But since the market is forward looking, this was terrific news in the eyes of the market because as rates come down, there's better opportunities in equities than there are in treasuries. And as a result of that, massive amounts of capital is gonna rotate from treasuries back into equities. All stocks were really higher, especially small cap names, especially high growth names, names that have been beaten up 60, 70, 80, 90% over the past 12 months. And since the FOMC meeting on 2 p.m. on Wednesday, SoFi has been up around 18%, if not a little bit more, as of this recording. Now, the interesting piece around all of this, tying it all back together, is that we know on an aggregate basis, we're at the highest levels of short interest in SoFi stock. We know that there's a very real possibility of a short squeeze, resulting in a more volatile move upward. Now, what we don't know is we don't know how much of that rally over the past two days led to short interest dying down. We don't know how much short interest there is left. We don't know if short sellers are gonna double down on their position or whether they're gonna capitulate altogether. We don't know if SoFi is gonna keep running next week or if it's gonna give back some of these gains. Mind you, the market is approaching these extreme greed levels from a sentiment perspective. So it's very possible that we give back some of these gains. Now, what we do know is that the company will report profitability it will guide for sustainable profitability in 2024 on a forward-looking basis. And if we believe what Tom Lee is saying, that small caps can rise as much as 50% in 2024, it should be a terrific year for SoFi, both from an underlying company perspective, but also from a stock perspective. Because in 2023, we've seen a big detachment. Essentially, the company is executing on a fundamental basis, but it's not seeing the reward of that consistent execution from a stock perspective. And my hope is that in 2024, that gap between the stock action and the company action will shrink because when it does, SoFi will hit 52 week highs and it might even go higher than that. And the reason why I say that is because the underlying company is consistently executing and has been doing so throughout the entire year 2023. So it seems as though with the Fed statement, the market is finally starting to realize that. And uh, we'll see what happens in terms of the short interest. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a volatile move higher. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw us pull back, right? I think we've seen them both play out before. However, if you remain invested in the long term, and if you have that sort of long term mindset, then the stock will form higher and higher lows as the company continues to execute. Join me tonight on the SoFi Wiki podcast at 10 p.m. on this channel. For right now, this has been the Fundamentals Investing Podcast. Thank you so much for listening.